post, down low. Brianna Turner, smooth to the hoop on the pass from Taya Reimer. Oh! Yeah, here we go! Welcome to a new segment right here on Watch ND, Irish Hoops Tip-Off. I'm Ryan Camden, live from the FIDM studio, and I invite you to join us for the next half hour or so as we will take a deeper look at both basketball programs here in South Bend. It's Big Ten ACC Challenge Week for College Hoops, and the Irish have two huge matchups. The men will take on 19th-ranked Michigan State. These teams might know each other, 90 plus times or so they've met, but this is the first time since 1979. The women will battle 15th ranked Maryland in a rematch of last year's Final Four semifinal game, a game the Irish won. Tonight, we got a lot for you. We will go live to Fort Wayne as Megan Bastido will bring us up to speed as the women's basketball team preps for the Terrapins. A little later, Jack Nolan and Lafonso Ellis will break down the men's basketball big matchup with Sparty live from from Purcell Pavilion. We will also get keys to each game from both coaches and a handful of men's basketball players. And Bastido will be back with the voice of the women's basketball team, Bob Nagel, to get a better look at the game with the Terps. It's a real exciting time here on campus as both teams are off to a great start. Mike Bray's team has only one loss, while Muffet McGraw's squad is perfect at 7-0 and number one in the coaches poll. But now, let's take a closer look at the parts that make the team whole. Here is a rundown of the student athletes we will see tonight for the women's basketball team. Notre Dame women's basketball is picking up right where they left off. Number one in the coaches poll, Coach Muffet McGraw has these ladies rolling. At a perfect 7-0, the Irish have won their games by an average of almost 47 points. But the road is going to get a little more tough with two matchups with top 10 teams this week. First up, a rematch from last year's Final Four with the 10th ranked Maryland Terrapins in the Big Ten ACC Challenge. A strong candidate for the best player in America, junior Jewel Lloyd makes the Irish offense a go-go. Lloyd is fantastic with the ball in her hands, averaging 20 points per game and only turning it over six times this season. Her combo of athleticism and speed is dynamic, so every game you gotta watch for the Jewel U. Freshman Brianna Turner is an absolute force in the front court for the Irish. The Gatorade High School Player of the Year has been worth all the prep hype, averaging 15.3 points per game, 6.1 rebounds, and shooting a very efficient 66% from the field. Taya Reimer is the second piece of the Irish front court, and the sophomore is a triple threat with the ball. Leading the team in rebounding at 6.6 .6 per game, she's also a great passer and can finish with either hand at the rack. Michaela Mabry is lights out from downtown. The New Jersey junior is hitting at a 43% mark from beyond the arc with 17 triples in this young season. At 9.3 points per game, watch out if she heats up from downtown. And sophomore Lindsey Allen has started since day one for Notre Dame. The point guard is great at setting the half-court offense or getting out in transition. She is averaging 8 points per game and 4.2 assists. Of course, the program is deep on the bench. Defensive stalwarts Hannah Huffman and Madison Cable have combined for 25 steals this season and will press on the perimeter. Freshman Michael Johnson is another fantastic athlete off the bench and will push the ball up and down the court. Johnson averages 18 minutes per game. Catherine Westbelt is another highly talented freshman, usually first off the bench and provides great depth in the front court. And of course, senior Marquisha Wright has logged a lot of minutes in a Notre Dame uniform, and this year has been no different. Wright is a great defender in the paint for McGraw's squad. Of course, Notre Dame creates defensive chaos with all kinds of length and wingspan at every position. They will push and press. But the Terps and Coach Brenda Freeze know a thing or two about the Irish, and this rematch will take place at a neutral site. 
that just happens to be a pretty great Notre Dame town, Fort Wayne. It'll be one of the marquee matchups in the early season for women's basketball. So much athleticism, so much speed, and so much fun to be had while watching Coach McGraw's team execute. Look for a very fast matchup between the Irish and the Terps. Now let's switch gears and get to know Mike Bray's squad. The men are playing great defense this year, perhaps some of the best under Coach Bray. But as in every year, conference play will prove to be a tough test. But they have an early measuring stick against the Spartans. Michigan State is a team that is used to stiff early season competition, having played and lost to the likes of second-ranked Duke and 11th-ranked Kansas. Sparty is averaging almost 74 points per game and, of course, coached by a legend, Tom Izzo. Let's get to know the Irish lineup. The Notre Dame men's basketball team comes into their ACC Big Ten Challenge Clash with Michigan State at 6-1. The Irish are clicking, putting up 86.3 points per game. Mike Bray's squad is making a smooth 58% of their shots. They are outscoring their opponents by almost 30 points per game with their lone loss, a very, very close one, 74-75, to reigning Big East champs Providence. Led by Jaron Grant, the senior from Bowie is dropping in 18.4 points per game, 7.1 assists per game, and three boards per contest. He leads the Atlantic Coast Conference in scoring and assists per game, and he had a career-high 26 last week against Chicago State. His 5.44 assist to turnover ratio must be mentioned as well. Captain Pat Connaughton is building on his stellar junior campaign. The Baltimore Orioles draft pick is averaging 13.7 points per game while leading the team in rebounding at 7.7 per game. Junior big man Zach August has exploded onto the scene. Second on the team in scoring at 15.3 points per game, he is also shooting a dynamite 70% from the field, a mark that leads the ACC. Sophomore Demetrius Jackson has taken control of the point guard position. The hometown hero is also notching double figure points at 11.9 points per game. He led the team in the win against Grambling State with 17. The starting five rounds out with sophomore Steve Astoria. The defensive specialist is averaging seven points per game for the Irish. Notre Dame will lead on VJ Beecham, Martin Gevin, and Austin Burgett off the bench. Beecham leads the team from beyond the arc, clipping at a 55% rate. Gebbin and Burgett provide big bodies and big minutes in the front court for Coach Bray. Also keep an eye out for freshman Bonzi Colson to provide some spark off the bench. Of course, the last time the Irish squared off against the Spartans, some guy named Magic was playing, and the Irish hope to have a little home magic of their own tonight. Purcell should be rocking tonight. Now let's catch up with our own, very own Megan Bastido. She is embedded with the women's basketball team in Fort Wayne. Little side note, they are playing at the Allen County War Memorial Coliseum, home of the Fort Wayne Comets, hockey, Mad Ants, basketball, and uh, Derby Girls. Due to scheduling conflicts, this is actually the first off-site home game for the program and the first visit to Fort Wayne since 1979. The series between the two is tied 4-4, and we're going to get to an interview with assistant coach and recruiting coordinator uh, Neil Ivey as they got off the bus. But now, quick switch gears, quick change on this. Let's jump into the primer we made. You might have seen it online for Michigan State. Don't get too hyped.
Irish fans, I apologize for the tech issues. Thank you for bearing with us. Now let's go live to Fort Wayne where Megan Bastido is with recruiting coordinator and assistant coach Neil Ivy to talk about tonight's game against Maryland. Megan, what do you got for us? Back here in Fort Wayne at the War Memorial Coliseum, joined by assistant coach Neil Ivy. Neil, obviously Maryland a member of the ACC last year and you guys played them in the final four. How does this Maryland team compare to the one you guys played last year? They're extremely talented just as, like, like, like they were last year. They have a great senior class with great experience. Um, their, their team goes with Lexi Brown, their point guard, and have some really great inside presence. And I feel like they're a little bit deeper this year. They go deep in the bench and I think everybody's coming together trying to fill that, fill that void of not having Alyssa Thomas and everybody's playing really well right now. And obviously this is a home game for you guys for the ACC Big Ten Challenge, but it's a home game away from home. What's that like for the team? Um, it's exciting. You know, we're only an hour and a half, what, two hour away from um, South Bend. We heard there's eight buses that's coming. So we feel like wherever we are, wherever we are in the country, that we have great fans that are going to come out and support. And it's exciting for the Fort Wayne community to see our team play in person. That's right. Game tips off here on ESPN3. You can listen to Bob Nagel on Watch ND at 7 p.m. Joined with Neil Ivey, I'm Megan Bastida. We'll have much more from Fort Wayne after the game. Hey, it should be a fun one tonight there in the F-Dub. Mike Bray is in his 15th season in South Bend and reached a major milestone, collecting his 400th career win after defeating Bingham, excuse me, Bingham, Binghamton to open this year. 306 of those victories have came right here at Notre Dame. And like I said, these two teams have met 94 previous times, but this will be the first time since 1979 when Magic Johnson and Michigan State defeated the Irish in the NCAA Championship Mid-East Regional. Of course, Michigan State went on to beat Indiana State, blah, blah, blah. Sparty is 8-3 and three in the last 11 meetings, and Coach Bray knows how tough this game will be. Let's get his keys and preview to tonight's matchup. I, I actually piped in crowd noise before we went up to Mohegan Sun. You know, usually you do it before you go on the road. We're going to use it a little bit today and tomorrow because it will be a different atmosphere. And can we have a great home atmosphere, uh, as it's done many times here, give us energy and confidence and not get us out of character or play too fast? I think it's the one of the top three things I need to address uh, going into Wednesday. Thing that's very the thing that strikes you is is how they're shooting. They're they're shooting the heck out of the basketball. Like us, they're making nine threes a game. Thirty eight percent of their field goal attempts are threes. Forty percent of ours. So we we're a little similar offensively. The first two things you think about, and we've talked about it yesterday, and actually worked some stuff in in Friday's practice. Transition defense. They really get down the floor on makes and misses. Trice gets deep outlets. And they shoot a lot of their threes in transition. Their percentage, and they throw ahead and fire. Um, you know, the kid from Cleveland State, the, the, the transfer Forbes, has given them another shooter out there. Um, but uh, transition D and then guarding the arc, I think, are the two big defensive keys for us on Wednesday. What would a win, would a win Wednesday help further distance yourself from talking yeah. about last year and what you weren't able to do? You know, I'm, I'm trying not to talk about it so much. I don't talk about it with our team that much. I mean, you know, you, you've kind of wanted to get this team's identity, its identity. Certainly, they have a little chip on their shoulder after last year, and, and that's been a good thing. There's a little, little, you know, chip there, and, and that's good. But we don't, we don't bring it up a lot. I mean, I, I think it would be, it would be huge for this team to accomplish something like this Wednesday, as we've kind of. Um, you know, I feel we've restabilized, uh, but we're, we, we, this would be so good for this group early in the season to feel like they've accomplished something against a really good program and team. Thanks, Coach. Let's head back in the rocket ship, drive south, go back to Fort Wayne where uh, Megan is with one of my favorite people, the voice of Irish women's basketball, and a man who knows a little thing or two about the sport, Bob. Megan, back to you. 
here at the Allen County War Memorial Coliseum, joined by the voice of Notre Dame women's basketball, Bob Nagel. Bob, obviously these two teams familiar with each other from last season. What have you seen from this Maryland team that we can compare to last season when we played them in the Final Four? Well, they're tenacious, and they really want to get Notre Dame. Notre Dame beat them twice uh, last year. We beat them in the regular season and then had a great game without Natalie Achano in the semifinal. I kind of, kind of surprised everybody. We beat them by double figures, so they thought they were a little bit better. Some of the younger players, uh, uh, weren't really ready to, to step up. Uh, made a couple of shots late in the game, but I think they're carrying them this year. And uh, they've got some experience, they've got some skills, and we're going to have to get out on the perimeter. I like to shoot the three a little bit, and uh, we're also going to have to rebound. This is a team that knows how to win. They've got an excellent coach. It'll be a good challenge. Notre Dame obviously young as well after losing the trio last season. How impressive have these young players been to start the season so far? Well, the good news is we don't know how good they can be. Uh, and that's uh, after eight games, or this will be our eighth game of the year. When you look at what they're doing and, and their unselfishness and their willingness to learn and to work really hard, and I really give a lot of credit on this team to our senior uh, captains. Uh, we have two senior captains, Whitney Holloway and Markeisha Wright, who aren't really ever going to play a whole lot. They're good players. They make you better in practice every day, but they welcomed in those freshmen, even though some of them are going to take minutes maybe that they could have got. And when you have that kind of an attitude, that uh, really gets the freshmen up and running. And I think the uh, the good thing is all of our captains are doing a great job. Michaela Mabry is doing a good job and really become a, a, a scorer you can count on. So we've got people that have stepped up. Yeah, K-Mac's gone and Ace is gone and Ariel's gone. And uh, the freshmen are doing a great job. So the good news going into game eight is we still don't really know how good we can be, but we'll get a good test here tonight. That's right. The game tips at 7 p.m. on ESPN3. You can listen to Bob on Pulse FM and right here on Watch ND. We'll have much more coverage for you coming up from here in Fort Wayne. Thanks, Megan. Thanks, Bob. We will have a lot more coverage from Fort Wayne after the game tonight. We heard from Coach Bray. We heard from Coach Ivy. Now let's hear from the players on the men's side. My man Jack Nolan, the voice of the Irish, caught up with the guys after practice on Monday. Let's take a look at what they have to say as they prep for a Michigan State team that is only allowing opposing offenses to shoot 37% from the field. Hey, they're excited. How excited are you for this game? Uh, extremely excited. I mean, uh, especially coming off that loss versus Providence, this is another chance for us to, you know, get out there and uh, you know show what we can do on a national scale. Uh, very excited to go out um, and play hard with my team, uh, showcase our abilities, and you know, just another opportunity to uh, get out and play against another good team. I'm very excited. You know, it's gonna be it's gonna be a test for us. It's gonna be fun to get up there with some uh, some top 25 competition. Um, obviously, it's gonna be a great atmosphere here for us, and I'm very excited. How long have you been thinking about this game? Uh, since the schedule came out, you know, uh, playing against a program like Michigan State is going to be great. When this arena is jumping, how does that lift this team? Uh, you know, we've had a lot of energy this year, but, you know, like, like you said, we haven't had a crowd like it's going to be on Wednesday, so the energy level is going to be amazing. I think it's going to be a good of an energy boost for us. You know, we haven't had that much of a crowd boost um, in the past couple of games. We haven't had that much, you know, some of the students weren't here, but I think it's going to be good for us. Uh, it just brings so much energy. I mean, the adrenaline in the building, you know, helps spark us from the from the 60 minutes before game mark uh, all the way straight through the end of the final buzzer. After going through what you went through, what does it mean to you to be in a marquee game like this again? Uh, it means a lot. You know, uh, I think me and Pat are, you know, we're the leaders on the team. So, you know, we have to be able to control the guys' energy, you know, the guys' poise. So, you know, to be out there and be able to play against a team like Michigan State is going to be fun. As the captain, what will you do to help some of your younger teammates who may not be used to the kind of atmosphere that's going to exist here on Wednesday night? Uh, just words of encouragement. I mean, uh, at the end of the day, uh, it's still a basketball game. We still uh, are the same team. We still have each other's backs, and we still uh, need to go out there and show um, you know the world that uh, we're coming off a tough year, but we're different this year. Not only two very good teams, but two very good point guards. Do you look at that matchup at all? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, uh, just I'm I'm com very competitive, so uh, I want to go out and play hard and, and and do my best against you know their point guard. When you look at this Michigan State team, what jumps out at you? Uh, the way they run, you know, and they're shooting the ball really well. You know, uh, previous years, I don't think I've seen them shoot the ball the way they've been shooting it this year. So they have some really good three-point shooters on the team. What would it mean for this team, coming off a tough year, to win this game? What kind of statement would that make? Uh, I'd make a huge statement. I mean, I think the, uh, this is the, you know, the game that everyone's had circles on their calendar. Even though we've been uh, you know, uh, saying that it's one game at a time, it's always going to be one game at a time. You, you can't help but notice the, the big games pre-conference that, uh, that are coming up. And uh, this is clearly the one that uh, you know, everyone around town has been circling. Thanks, 
Guys, while we're on the subject, let's take a look at those ACC Big Ten Challenge standings on the men's sides with the matchups tonight. Six and two, uh, the Big Ten has the lead after two nights, but a lot of games you see right here on your screen that the ACC is probably favored in. And a lot of pundits, analysts, experts, people alike say this Michigan State Notre Dame one could be the one, or excuse me, could be the game that tips the uh, the challenge back in the ACC's favor. Of course, eight games are necessary to win the challenge. There you get one more look at the Big Ten ACC challenge on the men's side. Let's flip over and look at the women's side. This is actually the first time that they, uh, or excuse me, this is the first night that they'll be having the challenge, and uh, it, it's going to be a doozy with one of those big highlights coming against Maryland and Notre Dame tonight. Really a crown jewel of uh, women's basketball here in the early season. Keep on moving. Series history, I've talked about it a little bit here throughout the pregame show. It's the first meeting between Notre Dame and Michigan State in 35 years. The Irish lead the all-time series. Sparty 8-3 in the last 11 games. Their first game on January 1st, 1908. I think Jack Nolan was like four years old. Last game, March 18th, 1979 in that Mideast Regional, as I mentioned. And on the women's side, the Terps and the Irish, they have met eight times. Pre previously, this is their ninth meeting. The series is even at four and four. The Irish three-game winning streak, longest by either team in the series. And uh, like we said, they last met in the semifinal of the Final Four last season in Nashville. So let's keep moving. The ACC, like I said, on the men's side, the conference is down 6-2 to two to the Big Ten in their yearly challenge. Last year, the first time the Irish were in it, they dropped a tough one at Iowa, 98-93. All-time, Michigan State is 2-2 two and two at Purcell. So we have heard from the coaches and the players. Let's hear from the two guys who have a great view of tonight's action, Jack Nolan and LaFonso Ellis. Let's go to Purcell Pavilion Live. Jack, what do you got for me? Oh, network, courtside, midcourt broadcast location. Tonight I'm joined by Notre Dame All-Century team member LaFonso Ellis for what should be a very good game. I really, in watching both these teams play, obviously I watch Notre Dame every game, <laughs> I think they're pretty well matched. Uh, I, I agree. I mean, you're talking about a Michigan State team this year that's not a traditional Tom Izzo team. They don't have the size across the front line. They aren't as physical down low. They've had to speed up their game a bit to get out in transition and look for early opportunities, either getting all the way to the rim with Travis Trice or allowing Trice to get in the gaps and looking for kicks because Denzel Valentine can really shoot the rock. So Notre Dame's going to have to be aware of where he is on the three-point line. Now, Notre Dame is the favorite tonight, but... Those lines were set before we got the bad news that late in practice yesterday, V.J. Beecham was injured. He suffered a foot injury that's going to keep him out for about a month. He's their sixth man in instant offense. Well, when we talk about Denzel Valentine and we talk about matches, Beecham at 6'7 has the length to be able to challenge some of those three-point shots. Beecham also on the offensive end is a guy who's shown the ability to make big shots, especially from the perimeter. And every of his game that's greatly improved is his ability to shot fake that three and get into the gap and pull it up. Notre Dame is going to really miss him tonight at times on the floor. Now, his injury opens the door for a bunch of other people. The first guy to step up is going to be Austin Burgett. Oh, man, if we can get big play with Austin down in the box, because Brandon Dawson is very physical, undersized, but very physical and can really leap. And if he can get Dawson in foul trouble early, it changes the complexion of this Michigan State offensive attack because he's the only guy who can get them buckets down in the low post. Now, for those of you who are going to switch over and listen to our radio broadcast here on Watch and D, you'll hear Mike Bray joke in the pregame show about how Fans have been kidding with him about the season opener against Michigan State <laughs> right. since July. And one of the things that makes this game so interesting is Demetrius Jackson. Not only is his quickness and perimeter defense help change the way this team plays. I mean, they're one of the nation's leaders in steals. When have we said that? <laughs> I don't think but we've he, ever. He also almost went to Michigan State. So there's a whole story around there. DJ's been huge for this team this year. Well, you're talking about a guy that's physical, quick, explosive. And last year, very inconsistent trying to find his way. But this year, he's been playing with a higher level of confidence. He's one of the few guys that can pick up opponents 94 feet and try to get into the, their dribble a little bit, make them uncomfortable. And DJ's been so confident on the offensive end. The difference between DJ this year, DJ last year. Last year, confidence rattled. This year, playing with a lot of confidence, and it's shown in his offensive production. 
It's going to be a fun night, both here on the campus of Notre Dame and, of course, the women playing on down in Fort Wayne. Ryan, back to you. Thanks, Jack. Thanks, Fonz. And thank you for sticking with us. I don't know if Jack got the memo about the bow tie. Must have got lost in his email. But we're not done yet. We sat down with head coach Muffet McGraw to get her keys to the game, too. And the Hall of Fame coach understands what challenge the Terps will present tonight. Keys to the game for us against Maryland. Number one is rebound. We have got to win the rebounding battle. Number two, we've got to take care of the ball and execute our stuff with great screens and really, really precise passing. And three, they've got great balance. They've got a great inside and outside game. We can't let Jones go off inside for a career night, and we can't let anybody on the perimeter have a big night. So I think for us, it's really just trying to play defense on everybody out there and hoping our team defense is the best it's been all year. Thanks, Coach. Exciting times coming up just moments away, really, from the women's tip-off. And before we do that, let's take one more look there at the Coliseum in Fort Wayne. If you know anything about Notre Dame women's basketball, you know they travel well. So let's take one more look at that. The team warming up. And, of course, like we said, home of the Mad Ants, the NBDL team there in Fort Wayne. The great thing about Fort Wayne, one of the best minor league sports cities in America. There you're getting a good close look up of – Catherine Westbeld, now Jewel Lloyd. It's going to be a tough one. And Brenda Free is a coach of the Terps. Really knows how good this team is. We mentioned a little bit in the, the lineup preview. So much length at every position for the Irish. Really creates some matchup problems for any team they place. And, of course, big, big week for the Irish women's basketball team. They have Maryland tonight and uh, UConn, a huge, a huge matchup on Saturday in Purcell. It's going to be one of the best basketball games for the men's or women, and it's going to be awesome. There you get a good look at the Irish faithful. They'll be back on Saturday, I know it, here at Purcell. That will do it for our pregame show. Like I mentioned, the women's game is set to tip off just moments from now at 7 o'clock on ESPN3, with the men's game following shortly at 7.15 on ESPN2. Remember, you can listen or you can listen to both games right here on our website on Watching D. Jack Nolan on the call of the men's and Bob Nagel on the call of the women's. We will have complete postgame coverage for both in the coming days, so keep it here on Watch D. Lastly, want to remind you, this is important, we will be back after the men's game to carry Coach, Presser, Coach Bray's Presser Live. So rejoin us after you listen to Jack, and, and if we win, well, you know, who, who knows who we might have in studio. I can't make any promises, but maybe there is a surprise in store for you. So I'm Ryan Camden, signing off for now. Go Irish, beat Terps, beat Sparty.